I'm a Linux. I'm using Linux Italian Window Manager for i3 probably, but I can need, but I need to use AutoCAD 2020 and Portal, and I can't find it for Linux. Is there some way of running it? Oh, I am so glad you asked. Uh, the answer is no. <laughs> not not without some sort of virtualization. Yeah, is that there are certain software like SolidWorks, anything in the 3D space and 3D design, mechanical engineering stuff like that. It's designed to run on Windows. The end. And if you try to do anything but that, you're going to be swimming against. You're going to be swimming upstream, and you're going to be really depressed. So don't do it. But the answer is, use Windows, and or or use another form of software. But if you're a professional, that's the best thing, particularly if you're using SolidWorks. And this is why I have gone back to running Windows with WSL and Mac as my primary desktop. Will really make you feel low for using Windows or Mac. And you just need to tell them to shut up. You don't need to tell them anything. You just need to not listen to them. Because to get work done in the enterprise, you have to use Windows or Mac. There's very few companies that allow you to use Linux. And if you do, great. You're fortunate. But most of them don't. So get used to a desktop, Windows or Mac. Uh, ow, uh, for getting that Go and Kafka job. Uh, this is one of our many community members who's been talking to us about getting a job and working on it uh, here. And it's kind of fun for me to watch that happen. And when people... Uh, really take it up a notch and they kind of reach the next level of their potential. I love it. So people have been asking me, what about this Pomo thing down in the corner down here? That's something I wrote. Uh, it's cmdbox pomo right now, but that's going to change eventually. But if you want it, you can come get that. It's a custom-made tool uh, that runs within my my Tmux. Uh, my Tmux updating about every one or two seconds. To coming up with a sound overarching design for dealing with different runtimes and that means like different shells bash z shell uh testing and stuff like that and i think we have that done now library module whatever you want to call it that helps you to make commands quickly so you know we all like to make utilities and we like to do things in bash and this is just just the next best thing to bash it's so you're able to make stuff really quickly and without thinking about it and have it be well documented you using gitlab on your own server i've been i've done this a lot i actually have a private git repo and I just use Git by itself for all my private stuff. But I actually like that Microsoft and GitHub are uh, together now because they're openly and actively promoting sponsorships that are getting money to free and open source developers more than anyone else Used has ever done. Uh, Docker in WSL2 yet. Uh, the best and safest way to do it is install Docker Desktop still, even though it's proprietary and costs money and you can't do it at work. But I think it's better for me to have a VM and then run Docker from inside a VM as God intended. And that's what I do. See in there that you need. I would say keep out of it any of your educational content. Make it private. Uh, except for maybe one lab where you're doing edu you know, really informed experimentation. You can show people you're doing that. That'd be the first thing I would make sure is in your GitHub. Repo that matches your name so that you have an, a landing page. And on that, I would put everything on that that you would put on your Discord. I'm sorry, on your LinkedIn. And I would like have links to your CV and all of that stuff. And I have my CV in mine publicly. That's what I would be putting Is in. to have a bunch of awesome contributions. That means if you're working on a project, fork that project and make sure it shows up. And then you, the people will get a, a, the sense of like, hey, this is a project I work on. Maybe even put it in your main repo so you link to it. Say, here's the projects I'm working on. And those are the main projects ideas I would do on GitHub. Uh, make sure that you actively commit to GitHub regularly. I maintain a Zettelcast on GitHub that has my thoughts and about what I'm discovering and doing on there so that people can get a sense of it. Plus, it also gives me a uh, commit history that is up to date. To use Linux if they want to. But if you want to work in tech, you don't have that option. And I've noticed that usually the people that complain the most about Microsoft and proprietary software don't have jobs, almost all of them. Because they have the freedom to run Arch instead of run what they have to because their company says so. about every other week about not being able to use Linux after using Linux on my desktop at IBM for 12 years. And then all of a sudden I couldn't do it anymore. And I said, we're sorry, we don't support it. And so I ended up giving us a, a, a Mac, which is the largest Unix distribution in the world, even though I hate I Apple. I use Linux every day. I use Linux every day on my desktop. I use WSL, I use Mac with a VM. I use servers that are doing it all the time. So I'm using Linux. It just doesn't have to be on your desktop. And and you don't have to, you know, throw out all of the other services that are out there. I just don't uh, think it doesn't run on most computers. It won't even run on my computer. I have a I have a, like a three year old gaming system that I bought from a Best Buy and it will not run Windows eleven because Windows eleven is stupid in its security policies. Uh and it also won't run some of the newer software, including VirtualBox. So I don't know. 
X graphics and Windows and Windows 10, they're wrong. You have to just get a thing called GWSL, which I'm pretty sure the Windows 11 project used. Somebody showed me about it, and you run that in the background as a daemon. I have it here. And when you run that, you can run any X11 application from WSL to on Windows 10. Really? Yeah, there's no money in operating systems. Name one company making money off their operating system right now. There's no money in it. Everybody's getting off of it. It's all cloud. It's cloud services and stuff. That's where the money is. So op there's no money in operating systems. Legal pedigree so that I can use this software I'm writing at work. People don't realize it, but unless you have a clean legal pedigree, even if you fucking wrote the software, you won't be able to use it at work unless it has a pristine legal pedigree because it won't pass the legal department. It's true. I just ask a lawyer in an enterprise. Exactly what gave Pearl the biggest fucking black eye in history when people use Pearl for reasons that shouldn't have done it. And they're doing it in Rust because Rust is so convoluted and impossible to understand that they're making it impossible for people to actually read the code later. They don't even realize they're doing, redoing the Pearl shit all over again. And they're, you know, they're kind of coming up with these different answers. And I, uh, I think it's fantastic that we're all figuring out how to deal with dynamic help documentation and things like that that travel with these static binaries, which are not that big. I actually wrote a post today about how to shrink the size of a Go binary by taking off debug and static symbol stuff. Uh, because of the other horrible things that are getting in the way. And I, it's really sad it's really sad. If they had given, you know, better thought to the syntax and thing, I think it would have been better. All right, I'm off. I'm going to go oh, eat soup. Aldi. You're going to all these. Okay. Working for two contexts. One of them is bash and the other one is test. And I wanted to detect that it's running from a test and or detect that it's running from bash. And I'm going to, we're going to add that detection over this next, uh, this next uh, Pomodoro session. Yeah, on this thing here. So... Yeah, we could make we could make like a gopher, like meticulously pruning a bonsai tree with glasses on, and uh, put the actually bonsai uh, logo on the pot. I think that's fantastic. Let's go go for it. That's a great logo idea. Last Pomo, I struggled with uh, the interface method of resolving cyclical conflict, cyclical imports, and I've gone back and removed some stuff and got it to work now. So we're going to be moving forward. Your uh, counterintuitive problem and go. I, I wrote this 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 little function here, right? And the x dot commands is a, are pointers, and I wanted to cast them to the interface because the pointers fulfill the interface. I got all the methods. Uh, but it didn't work because Our, reasons. That it's it can't do it. It can't cast it. It can't, it can't make it work that way. But if you put it into a loop... It works just fine. It works just fine. And that is the way to do that. So I learned something about casting today, particularly with interfaces. The truth of the matter is, is you just have to practice using it. There's really no easy answer there. Uh, Tmux is very hard to understand. It's a great man page. Yeah, so I would just go with that and just practice learning it and looking at other people's uh, uh, files. And the boost will be doing a, at least a full hour or two on just Tmux from Tmux, from Firefox, and stuff like that, I just use my mouse and just right click or whatever. Uh, and there's no shame in that. Uh, the only time I use the Tmux cut and paste is when I don't have anything else and I need to go from terminal to terminal. And that works pretty well. But I do whatever hap whatever works as fast as I can. Text-based browser and Tmux is so important is for the matter of cutting and pasting because you can continue to use Tmux cut and paste. Uh, and most of the stuff that you would research and want to search for is easily findable through a text-based browser without the extra hassle of the other stuff. I love iTerm2 on a Mac so much is that it does integrate the system clipboard uh, directly with Tmux. And so any cut and paste, go straight to it. Um, another thing you can do is use Xclip. Uh, if you get the right tool on Windows, even with WSL2, you can use Xclip. You can go download a thing called GWSL, and that will give you Xclip. And you can cut and paste and send stuff to Xclip from the command line uh, and then you can the xclip it gets saved to your to your regular cut and paste that comes with your host OS, and and that works just fine. I can I can you know it's a middle click and then I can right click and it pastes it because because it's already in my system buffer now. If I were to open up Notepad, uh, I could even paste it here and it would still be there because because I'm using xclip. So that's really cool. I got the operator SDK from Red Hat because it's super dangerous. 
Yeah, so the operator framework is dangerous because I think it's a huge uh, failure because it didn't do learn anything from Helm 2 Tiller. Helm 2 Tiller was shamed into uh, removing its full root permissions to your entire cluster uh, over there at Red Hat about that. I mean, you think that they would be about this. I wrote a, a huge Z about this. If you search my Z for, for operator, you'll find this. Uh, but I cannot overly stress how bad and dangerous this is and how much I would actively work against framework. It. You have to give these permissions to your cluster, which is basically root to everything in the entire cluster because all the operators that people write have to be run as root and they have to be managed as root. And God help you if they do it wrong because they get root access if they do. See this? See this? Uh, you can fix that very simply by changing split to fields and and getting rid of it and your tests will suddenly pass. No Maybe. idea why people think, oh, that's Google. I don't want to deal with it. They have no fucking idea. They have no fucking idea how awesome Go is because of it. But the rest of everybody who's making money right now all is using Go. <laughs> all right. I, had, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. I'm going to summarize this, but I think the takeaway here is that um, rather than having delegation go between the two, we're going to be calling into higher level libraries uh, as, as a matter of course, and then they'll be able to maintain state and communication. And this so. idea of, um, of services and composition going um, for a possible future where we can do that. But I really like the idea of the high level access to things, uh, you know, as a high level libraries and, and more, but we'll definitely work on that some more tomorrow.